This is Big Island Video News for Thursday, May 11th, 2023. A quick Kilauea update. The volcano is not erupting and there has been no change to its alert status, with the level remaining at advisory. The previously reported inflation in the summit region is ongoing, while summit seismicity remains elevated. The USGS Hawaiian Volcano Observatory continues to note that, overall, inflation at the summit is higher than what was seen preceding the January 5th summit eruption. No unusual activity has been reported along the rift zones. Hawaii County Civil Defense is also letting the public know that on Friday there will be some warning siren testing in the Hilo area. Here is the radio message from emergency officials. The State of Hawaii Emergency Management Agency will be conducting a test of specific new and upgraded outdoor warning sirens in and near the Hilo area tomorrow, Friday, May 12th. This test will sound various alert tones that will be audible in the surrounding areas. This is only a test. The sirens scheduled for tomorrow's tests are Baker Avenue, Carvalho Park, Kaumana Elementary School, and the Pepekeo siren. If this were an actual emergency rather than a test, the siren sounding in and near the Hilo area would have been followed by official information, news, or instructions. Should you have any questions regarding this scheduled siren testing, please contact Civil Defense at 808-935-0031. Thank you for your attention. This is your Hawaii County Civil Defense Agency. The public is sounding off on the future of Puna's only boat ramp, which remains landlocked by sand and lava rock. We have a very exciting discussion ahead of us. A virtual public that, meeting you know, was held on May 10th to discuss the draft environmental assessment for the Po Hiki boat ramp dredging of volcanic debris project. State officials and project consultants presented the details on the preferred alternative to restore the bay to a shape and depth that resembles pre-eruption conditions to the extent possible following the Kilauea lava inundation that occurred in 2018. In August 2022, we had a community meeting to share the alternatives that our planning report had covered. And that was a very, very good discussion, heated at times, emotionally charged, um, standing room only. I think we had more than 150 people attending that one. Um, the outcome of that meeting was what we're doing is is not good enough. So we actually came out of that meeting with a fourth alternative, which is the recommended alternative. And that's kind of what um, what we've been running with ever since. And um, that's what the draft EA is presenting tonight. Officials said the Federal Emergency Management Agency's commitment to reimburse 75 percent of the anticipated $40 million cost has been cast in doubt in recent weeks. At this point, we've heard rumors that the FEMA funding for the recommended alternative, the one that basically dredges the bay back to its pre-eruption condition, that's in question right now. We don't have anything in writing, so nothing's official, but that's what we've been hearing. Now, our legislators, um, Gregor Ilagan and Joy San Buenaventura, have been on board with this um, basically since the recommended alternative was determined last August. And so they've been fighting to get the funding, but that has somewhat changed because of some of the rumors that we've heard about FEMA not willing to do the full project. Everything is kind of still, like I said, up in the air. We don't have anything official yet. During a meeting, there were voices in favor of preserving some of the features of the new Black Sand Beach in particular some of the hot ponds that were created by the geological changes. Leslie. I would just like to ask if you can please give consideration to preserving the hot springs, which are right along the previous coastline, not the one at the bottom, not the pond at the bottom of the boat ramp, but the ones that are further back, not the one in the jungle. I mean the ones along the back of what you're calling the debris. They get very hot. They're not filled with bacteria. There's two big ones and then two smaller ones further along. There are other ones to the other side of the parking lot. But I'm just wondering if there's any way to preserve those because there are no other hot springs in Hawaii than these along this coast. And this one is actually rather excellent. Uh, 
I think the fishermen should go back in the water. I don't think the entire bay should be dredged. I think that back area for cultural and for the reason of like, these are pristine hot springs not found in other places. But many of the participants who have ancestral ties to the area want to see the boat ramp return to use so that Puna fishermen can get back to work. The concern I have is for our Lavai, our fishermen. They have been expending $800 round trip to go out of Hilo. Our, our boat ramp brought in the top three in the state for fish coming in. We have a food sustenance issue in my view. And my family is from Puna for seven generations. I'm the seventh. And I would trust that our newcomers and new residents understand the importance of not just our food and our icebox, but our cultural significance of our boat ramp, which affords Ohana gathering, going out on the boats, visiting. And, you know, I want to address the hot pond very quickly. Our Ohana that lives right there where the hot pond that's being referred to in the back has had numerous trespassers and a lot of untoward behavior. And I understand the popularity of it. I'm not going to bring in the bacteria-ridden problem if it exists, but more so the respectful enjoyment, and that has not transpired. I would ask our community to be mindful of where you are. These are historic grounds. And when you use the word sacred, our kupuna decide that, not us. We have a moral and ethical obligation to make sure that our fishermen come back into Pohoiki and start feeding our community again. Comments on the draft EA are due by May 23rd. Currently, we're in that second line, which is the draft EA published back in April 2023. Pre-final design is anticipated to be submitted next week, May 15th, 2023. As I had indicated, the draft EA comment deadline is May 23, 2023. The final EA, we are targeting to publish in July of 2023. Final design to be submitted in September of 2023. And the bid advertised date in October 2023 and the completed construction in June 2024 are have asterisks next, next to it. And this is barring any major issues either with funding, with planning or reviews, those are the targets that we're trying to hit. Um, and that's why they're in asterisk because as John had mentioned, there are certain things that are, are slightly out of our control. Um, these are the dates assuming that everything kind of goes through. So barring any major issues, these are what the, we're shooting for, hopefully to get everything open by June, 2024. The Hawaii County Cultural Resources Commission on Wednesday reviewed the potential impacts on cultural, archaeological, or historic resources for a new housing project in Waikoloa. These renderings were presented to the commission showing what the future Ho'omalu Workforce Housing Project will look like. The Waikoloa Land Company, which manages development and operations at the Waikoloa Beach Resort, plans to build the 228-unit residential complex next to the Queen's Marketplace. The project site is zoned for development. We chose that because it was already zoned and we felt could facilitate an easy path forward for affordable housing. We don't have any, any other property that's viable for this type of activity. Um, and we thought this was an excellent site to, to bring forth workforce housing. The project will be comprised of 12 separate buildings, a community center, parking areas, roads, and landscaping. An archaeological inventory survey done by Han and Associates at the request of the Waikoloa Land Company shows the lands served a unique purpose in the past. The inventory survey um, documented a little over 10,000 archaeological features, and most of these um, are um, uh, rather individually rather small. They are um, associated with uh, quarrying and production of, 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 of braiders. These are essentially a sandpaper to used in the production of, of canoes and all manner of, of wooden implements. This site lies within a, a much larger area in, in which the quarrying and manufacture of, of a braiders uh, took on a, a, a tremendous um, scale. 
um, the, the, the extent of this area is, is something over 400 acres. Um, this lies in sort of the, the central uh, western portion of that larger area. I was wondering um, like how common are these sites across Hawaii? Um, is this like the largest and most extensive uh, greater productions that you've seen? Um, are there usually these sites in East Moku? This is the only one I'm aware of. I have I have seen I think this one's pretty special and pretty large. This, these sites do show up on a couple other. I believe it's a Mauna Loa flow. Going back to Kule's question, I think it's a, a lava flow from Mauna Loa, um, and I have seen similar sites, but not at this scale, on other Mauna Loa flows that are of similar age, um, and they they are pretty impressive to see in person. So, you know, I, I definitely recommend a site visit. The Cultural Resources Commission voted to form a permitted interaction group to further investigate the parcel to include going on a future site visit.